This program is made possible by the giving of the God Called Partners of Renner Ministries. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insights and understanding from the Word of God. Here is Rick. Hey friends, this is Rick Renard. I'm so glad to be with you. And today we have a special treat because we're going to bring you a live service where we preached at Eagle Mountain International Church where I dealt with a spirit of fear. How do you conquer a spirit of fear? Have you ever had to deal with a spirit of fear? I have. And the Lord had to show me how to overcome it. And that's what I deal with in the program today. You're going to just eat it up and please let me know what you think about today's message. But we're offering you the whole series, which is a two-part series called How to Overcome a Spirit of Fear and How to Speak Faith to Yourself in troubled times. You got to get a grip on that spirit of fear and begin speaking faith to yourself. And this series will show you how to do it. And it comes with a wonderful study guide. And right now we're offering you for the first time my book, which is called Life in the Combat Zone. We usually give this only to people who become partners, but it really matches what I teach in this series. So I want to offer it to you. You can go online to order it. My friends, it is really powerful. But hey, there's another treat for you in today's program. Before we get into my message, Denise is going to sing for you. So buckle your seatbelt and get ready because Denise is going to really bless you with what she has performed and sung at Eagle Mountain International Church. Then I immediately will begin to teach you about how to overcome a spirit of fear and how to begin to speak faith in troubled times. You can do it. You do not have to remain in the grip of fear. And by the way, if you have a prayer need, reach out to us. Let us know how to pray for you because we really are praying people and we want to pray for you. And the moment you call us or the moment your email shows up in our inbox, we're going to release our faith and Jesus is going to do something mighty in your life. But hey, let's get started. I want to proclaim to everyone in this room that we can say boldly to the face of the devil, to the face of sickness, to the face of problems, family problems, we can say boldly, it is well with my soul. We can say that. I can't help but think about that Shunammite woman holding her dead son in her lap. The son, it was a promise to her. And she had that dead son in her lap. She said four times, it is well. I believe she was telling herself every single time as she thought about that, that dead son back there in that prophet's room, it is well, it is well. It is well, 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 it is well with my soul. I'm in. Hallelujah. my way with 
open your Bibles to 2 Timothy chapter 1 and reach for a piece of paper and something to write with because today we're going to go to Bible school. Is that all right? So go to 2 Timothy chapter 1. We're going to begin with the opening verses. And I want to give you the context of the book of 2 Timothy so that we can really make this book come alive for you. But let's begin in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 1. And of course, Paul is writing. He says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God. And then if you have an ink pen or a pencil, underline the next two words. According to the promise of life, which is in Christ Jesus. Verse 2. To Timothy, my dearly beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father in Christ Jesus our Lord. Verse 3. I thank my God whom I serve from my forefathers with pure conscience that without ceasing I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day. Either underline or circle the word remembrance. Then in verse 4. Greatly desiring to see thee being mindful of thy what? tears. And the word tears here in Greek is plural. It is not a teardrop, but it really means that Timothy was sobbing. And the reason that Paul knew Timothy was sobbing, most scholars say, is because when he received a letter from Timothy, he could see the stains of Timothy's tears on the parchment. And Timothy was in such a desperate position that he wrote a letter to Paul and in the letter, he poured his heart out. He explained everything that he was undergoing and going through and was appealing to Paul, please help me. Tell me what I should do in the situation that I'm in. And at the time that Timothy wrote this letter, he was the presiding leader or he was the senior pastor of the church of Ephesus. You know, when you're the pastor of a large church, who do you turn to when you have a problem? And the only person that Timothy knew to turn to was the Apostle Paul. And when he wrote his letter to the Apostle Paul and said, Paul, I'm in trouble. I'm struggling. I don't know what's going to happen to me. And I'm dealing with a spirit of fear. Paul himself was in prison in Rome where he was being tried as an arsonist, an arsonist. Now, let me give you a little history to the book of Second Timothy. Christianity was never a persecuted faith until the year 64. If you read about persecution in the book of Acts, especially in the earlier years, they are all religious persecutions. There was no official governmental persecution against the church until nearly 30 years after Pentecost. Some say even 40 years after Pentecost. All that early persecution was religious persecution. But in the year 64 something very strange happened. Nero burned down the city of Rome and he needed to find a scapegoat to blame for the fire. Well, if anybody could be naturally nutty, it would have been Nero because he came from a very crazy family. His great grandfather was Caesar Augustus who declared that he was God. Same Caesar Augustus who had an affair with Cleopatra, who was a very dear friend of Herod the Great. It's amazing how small the world was at that time and how it was so connected. Well, after the time of Caesar Augustus, the throne went to Caesar Augustus' nephew and his adopted son, whose name was Tiberius. The little town of Tiberius, which is on the Sea of Galilee, was built in his honor. But Tiberius was a sexual pervert in fact, he was so sexually twisted that he retreated to the Isle of Capri. He called it the Orgy Island or the Pleasure Island. And his intention would be that orgies took place on that island 24 hours a day. And for 14 years, he ruled Rome from that twisted place. And on the island with him was his nephew, whose name was Caligula. Caligula was mistreated sexually by his uncle and by the other men on the island. And so when Tiberius died and Caligula came to power in Rome, he only ruled for four years. He had been so abused mentally by his uncle on that island for all of those years that he brought all of that twistedness and all of that abuse to the throne with him. 
Well, you can imagine what a man like that would do if the whole power of the world was placed in his hands. And in fact, Caligula was so mentally twisted that he believed that he was God, and he fashioned himself after the Greek god Cronus. The Greek god Cronus ate the babies of one of his sisters. So when Caligula's sister gave birth to twins, he ate them to prove that he was the equivalent of Cronus. I'm just telling you this to tell you what kind of a family Nero was from. When Caligula died, the throne went to Caligula's uncle whose name was Claudius. Claudius married a woman whose name was Agrippina. Agrippina was the sister of Caligula. Caligula had had an incestuous relationship with Agrippina, so she had all of that abuse in her. Now she had all this power. She carried it into the throne when she became the wife of Claudius the emperor. She had a son from a previous marriage whose name was Nero. She wanted Nero to be the next Roman of the emperor, uh, emperor of the Roman Empire. So she fed her husband, Claudius, who was the emperor, a bowl of poison mushrooms. He died, and she proclaimed that her son Nero was the new emperor of the Roman Empire at the age of 16. Now, how many of you have had a 16-year-old? Can you imagine giving all the power in the world to your 16-year-old and telling him that he was a god and there was nothing that was wrong for him to do? And Nero became the 16-year-old emperor of the Roman Empire. And he was told by his mother, you're god, you're god, you're god, you're god. He began to embrace his own divinity and began to eliminate anyone who would disagree with him. So first of all, he had his teacher, Seneca and Lucia, killed. Then he began to have members of the Roman Senate killed. And then he got tired of his mother's manipulation. So he had his mother killed. And when he had his mother killed, finally he was free to be everything that he always dreamed he could be. And Nero believed, he really believed, that he was the greatest musician that had ever lived. He believed he was the greatest actor that had ever lived. So even though it was not permitted for Roman emperors to perform, he began to perform on the stage and sing. And history said his singing was just horrific. But people couldn't leave his performances because if they got up and walked out, they would be killed. And there's actually one record of a woman who was so pregnant, she gave birth to her baby in his concert because she was afraid to walk out. He believed he was the greatest architect that had ever lived. And so he wanted to design himself a new home. And he would call it the Golden Palace. A house completely veneered in mother of pearl, which was then to be covered with gold leaf. And that's why it was called the Golden Palace. And the house that he wanted to build was 300 acres. So if you think you know of somebody with a big house, nobody has a big house. <laughs> but there was a problem. Where he wanted to build his house was the most ancient section of Rome. So he went to the Roman senators and said, I want to tear down this section of Rome. I want to build my palace. And they said, Nero, you may think that you're God, but we're not going to let you tear down our houses for you to build your palace. So he went to his villa just out on the outsides of Rome called his servants and said, I want you to go into the main circus in the city of Rome. I want you to set a fire when people are not there and they don't know what's happening. And they obeyed him. And the embers began blowing in the air. And soon the entire city of Rome was on fire. And by the time the fires had gone out, the section where Nero wanted to build his house was in complete rubble. And finally, he could construct his dreams. And he began constructing his 300 acre house. And rumors began to circulate throughout the city of Rome that it was Nero who instigated the fire. So the Roman Senate called him for his own trial and his own execution. And while he was en route to the Senate, he conceived 
a diabolical idea. And when he finally sat in front of the Senate and they brought their charges against him, he said, how could you think that I, Nero, would burn down my beloved city of Rome? I can tell you who did this. My spies have brought me information. And then the Senate said, tell us who burned down the city of Rome. And Nero said, Christians, this new group, this sect in our town, they have burned down the city of Rome. They said, tell us what you know about these Christians. And he brought five allegations which were partially true and they also were untrue. And this was the beginning of fake news. <laughs> There's nothing new, my friends. Nothing new. You think transgenderism is new? No. Do you know to be a priest in the cult of Sybil in the city of Smyrna? You could only be a priestess if you started as a man. You had to go through a surgical procedure to have all your male anatomy removed, and you had to become a woman to be a priestess in the temple of Sybil, which means the first century church had to deal with transgenderism. There's nothing new under the sun. We can handle anything. The church is anointed to deal with it all. We are living in a world filled with uncertainty and fear. As an end-time generation, we are facing things we never dreamed we would face and previous generations have not ever had to deal with before. Sometimes it seems like darkness has been unleashed, and as a result, many people have been gripped with fear. Others deal with fear about their finances, their health, their family, their jobs, their future. But you do not have to give in to fear. You can learn to conquer fear and speak faith to yourself. The programs in this series are being offered as a two-message set in digital and physical formats, starting at just $20. And this series will include two study guides, How to Overcome a Spirit of Fear and How to Speak Faith to Yourself in Troubled Times. We are also offering Life in the Combat Zone, Rick's classic book that deals extensively with the situation the early church faced during the brutal days of Nero. It was a time when there was betrayal in the church, defections from the ranks, and people were troubled but they overcame fear and learned to speak faith to themselves. They learned how to survive, thrive, and overcome in difficult situations. And Rick will show you how you can do it too. Life in the Combat Zone is available for $17. Don't miss this special offer, the series, How to Overcome a Spirit of Fear and How to Speak Faith to Yourself in Troubled Times, and the book, Life in the Combat Zone. Call the number on your screen or go to renner.org to order. Call or go online now. Hey friends, this is Rick Renner and today I want to give you a report about what's happening in the construction of our new studio. Work still continues. It's taken a little bit longer than we anticipated because of all the sanctions that have stopped materials from coming to Russia, but we're doing it step by step. And today they're installing the fireplace, which is going to be the centerpiece of this big room where we're going to be filming programs. But in addition to this, there's gonna be another set over here and another set over there. So many angles and opportunities to film teaching that people can trust in this room. But of course, this is just one room. But I have to tell you, I'm pretty excited about this room. To think that TV programs with the Word of God are going to be filmed right here. And when I look around this room, you can see this electrical grid, grid that's gonna hold all the lights. It's on electrical pulleys, so it goes up, it goes down. It's just going to have everything we need to film the teaching of the Word of God. But hey, there's more than this. Let me show you. Well, I know you can't tell from what it looks like right now, but this really is gonna be one of the smaller studios, and this is gonna be Denise's studio because Denise is reaching women everywhere with her programming. And right from this spot, Denise is going to be sending her teaching to women all over the world. But hey, there's another set in addition to this one. This is our third studio in this new building. 
You may say, why do you need three studios? Because we're filming a lot of programs. Right now, we can only film one program at a time. We have to set it up, take it down, but this will enable us to do multiple things at one time. But on both floors of this building, there are multiple offices. In fact, there are 18 offices, and in all of these offices, people are going to be doing editing, writing, producing programs, working with our network. It is amazing the activity that's going to take place in this building. And it's not about buildings, it's about people. People need the teaching of the Word of God. But it's your generous gifts that have helped us to build this and we will complete it. But right now we're in phase three of our ministry, which is paying off our Tulsa ministry headquarters. We want to pay it off because the moment it's paid off, all of those funds will be released for us to broadcast the teaching of the Word of God around the world. And that's really our goal, to get the gospel and to teach people the Bible all over the world. They're just crying out for it and they're waiting for that signal to come with the answer that they've been seeking. So please help us as we finish phase three to pay off the Tulsa facility. Well, how did you enjoy the introduction to this new series, which I preached at Eagle Mountain International Church in Texas? Wow, I love to go to that church. There's so much power in that church. But thank you for letting me bring this message right to where you are. And I want you to order the entire series, which is called How to Overcome a Spirit of Fear and How to Speak Faith to Yourself in Troubled Times. You need to start speaking to yourself and quit listening to yourself. You need to use your mouth and tell those mountains to move out of the way. And that's what this series is about. It's just so practical and so helpful. And it comes with a great study guide. My friends, you will devour it. You can read the study guide while you're hearing or seeing the series. And we're also offering you right now my book, which is called Life in the Combat Zone. The subtitle says, How to Survive thrive and overcome in the midst of difficult situations. And it's based on what I'm preaching in the message today. It's based on Paul's words to Timothy when Timothy was really dealing with a spirit of fear. We go through all the scriptures in 2 Timothy to see how to overcome a spirit of fear and how to begin speaking faith to yourself in troubled times. And my friends, you can order all these things by going online or by calling us. And in the same way, you can reach out to us to request prayer. Just call us or go online. And the moment we hear from you, our team is going to move heaven on your behalf. And God is really going to work in your life. But Father, I think in the name of Jesus, we do not have to live in the grip of fear. We can walk out of it. And I declare freedom to my precious friend in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll be back tomorrow. We're going to continue right here. But until then... Remember Ecclesiastes 8.4, it says, where the word of a king is, there is power. Renner Ministries is proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ through every available media to the uttermost parts of the earth. Discover the many ways you can help us make a difference in lives around the world with the word of God. We invite you to partner with us in teaching, strengthening, and rescuing lives for the glory of God. Together, we can make a difference that will last throughout eternity. This program was made possible by the giving of the God-called partners of Renner Ministries.